Thank you so much for watching. Today we're talking about the no-code building tools available in Appify Studio. Appify Studio package everything you need to create your business applications. That means configuring your user experience, defining your business processes, adding your business logics and business rules, and deploy those applications so your users can enjoy them. Appify Studio is a full feature configuration environment for high performance, no code apps delivery. Let's dig into it. This is Appify Studio, and this is the section where you can manage your application. As you can see, I have multiple already created, and you will be able to have as many applications as you want. When it's time to come and create an application, you click create a new app with your app designer. You can give it a name, you can give it an icon, you can set the updates to be automatically deployed into your users. And an application in Appify is composed of three different elements, action flows, actions, and views. We'll walk through each one of these. Let's start with actions. Actions are these elements that exist to give access to the users to the information that we have. Here is when we can create a list. For example, I can create a new with the designer. I can say all accounts. I say that I want to use list. I will select my data source. I will select my objects. So I'm going to say save. And here I can give a description, uh, help text, and I can say, well, uh, do I need to filter this? Uh, let's say no at this point. What would be the primary field? Let's say the account name. Uh, do I want to provide some sorting? Yes, yeah, sorted by account name, which order, and then which fields do I want? Well, maybe I need the uh, billing city, uh, maybe the zip code. Then I can choose, for example, what is the industry uh, and who's the owner. If I wanted more fields, I can just add more fields here. Let's add the you know, building street. I can decide how many do I want per page. And that's it. That's what it takes to build a list. I can provide other type of experiences as well. For example, I can have information that makes more sense to be presented on a map. So I say add with designer, uh, um, account, locations, and I can say I want to use a map. Again, I'm gonna use my account object. And now I can decide if I wanna apply a filter. It won't be the case this time. What will be the primary field, the account name? What are the fields that I wanna show in each one of those points? Maybe I want to show the billing zip code. And then the location type, I can use an address. And for address, I can make a combination of different fields. So here I can say city, street, well, I should do it in another order. Street, city, state, zip code and country. I can save, and now I have a presentation of all my accounts in a map. Other type of action would be presented on a calendar, for example, when I can put information on a calendar or uh, as a checklist, so I can present some sort of questionnaire. Appify provides several different experiences for you to create your actions. Now, let's talk about action flows. Action flows are your business process. This is where we are going to provide support to the life cycle of the data that we want to force your users to take. So let's say we want to add a new action flow with your designer. Let's call this account flow. And of course, it's gonna be about the account object. I'm gonna save this. And here I have my actions and my view, and these are the elements that I can use in my business process. I can create records, edit add records, uh, add a checklist, uh, maybe collect some signatures, or create a related type of different records. So 
I'm gonna start by adding a create action. I'm gonna call it create account. Uh, as you can see, I have my account object, but I could select another one of my data sources. Um, I, and I have the option to run this in silent mode, which is when we don't want the users to have to go into a specific interface. We want to provide that functionality for them. That won't be necessary now. I will just go and save this. And now that I have my create account, I will offer my edit. So edit account, same thing here. So if I go, if I click into my create account task, I I am I navigate to my user, uh, the, the interface designer, when I can have the different sections. So I can have, for example, the standard, uh, section when I give it a title and I will say, you know, account data and I say, you know what, here I want to put the account name and maybe the industry. I want to add uh, another uh, uh, section. Uh, here would be um, the address. So I can have my billing street uh, my Billy uh, City. Let's add one more column here. Billy State, and then I can do zip code and country. So you can see, it's just a matter for drag and dropping each one of the elements that I have. In each one of these, I can click on this and provide a default value. Kind of decide if something is mandatory. Once I'm satisfied, I can save my user interface. I have the option to go and add validation rules. So if I want more elaborate uh, rules, I can add my rule here. Uh, please enter data correctly. And I can say, for example, if there's an error field on the account data is it, this is the condition and I can go and decide my business logic. So I can say, let's add a new one. And here you can create your expressions. And this is a component that exists in several parts of um, Appify Studio when you use the fields and the attributes of your objects to be able to say, uh, express your business rules. For example, I'm gonna say billing country, it needs to be equal and I can relate it to um, another field. So I can say owner country, for example, and I can add as many rules as I want related by an and operator or an or operator. And then I can create even different groups uh, that provide me some nesting capabilities of how I want to organize these rules. This is gonna be okay. I'm gonna hit here my rule or oh, my criteria and save this. If that right now I'm using Flex, but if this was connected to a remote data source, we can configure endpoints where we will be calling that service to be able to say when this object is saved, go and perform that operation on that service. So if you have an API that exposes a data object, we can use that API as the backend to store, retrieve, and update all the different elements of the data that we have. Let's go back to our account flow. And I can add another user interface for my edit account. I'm gonna make this super fast. Uh, account data. And this time I just wanna add the account name and industry, save this. Those business rules that you saw me define as a criteria are the same one that you will be able to use in other places. Here I can go back to my configure and see that this action is can be enabled under certain rules. Here is the my criteria, that's the one that I define it. And if I select it, I could go back into and select, uh, see the configuration and even modify as I needed to. 
Last but not least is the views. And views represent uh, those interfaces that we are going to see the object when the we are not in an action, but we are like navigating from a list into the details of an object. So I can call this view account. It's gonna be related to the account flow that I created previously. I can associate a criteria and I save this. And again, use the uh, user interface designer to be able to organize your element. There's an additional element here called summary, which is what is presented when we bring this side view for lookups of the application. So I can add here, for example, just the account name. And then in my standard section, I can add account name and industry. I could add as many flows and as many actions as I, as I deem necessary. Uh, for example, let me go to one of the existing applications. Uh, like this one. In here, you can see that I added multiple flows, in this case, three, and I have the service report flow that have multiple actions. And that's because I just want to be able to uh, uh, provide support for what are the elements of interaction that my users will have. In this case, it was for a service report and I wanted for them to have the ability to enter information about a device and then mark up that a service is about to start and eventually go and collect the signatures of uh, the service manager. Once your application is complete, or you feel it's time to uh, provide the updates to your users, you can go to rollout, and then you can say publish application. It will provide a version number 1.0, first version. And here you can decide exactly what are the components that you are going to publish. So right now I'm gonna include everything because you can see I have modified this. But as I keep going and adding more and more changes, you will know exactly what has been modified and you have a, a last moment to decide, do I want to push this to my users? I click next and I see a summary of what is about to happen. And when I click rollout, this application will be available for the users. Now that my application exists, I can associate profiles with it. And I can say this is the demo profile and I can either invite a specific users uh, that may or not be part of the profile. I can use a combination of those to have access to it. And now these users, when they connect to the mobile apps or to the web client, they will be able to interact with our application. Thank you so much for watching. For more information, visit our website and feel free to reach out directly.